Hello, everybody. Looks like we've got 31 person connected already. Happy to see you all here. Let's do a quick sound check. Can everyone hear me? Perfect. Um, I, I think let's give it a couple of minutes for everybody else to join. Uh, in the meantime, maybe you could tell me where you're from. Scotland, Ukraine, hey, South Korea, right. India, Germany, Estonia, London, Belgium, Spain, Scotland again, Bulgaria, perfect. And Portugal and Italy there as well. Algeria, nice to have you here from Algeria as well. I'm guessing the weather is better in every one of those countries than it is in Latvia right now. Oh, no. I'm surprised to hear that. Well, we need to define what's good weather and what's bad weather first, I guess. Belgian weather always wins. Forty, forty plus. All right, yeah, that that's a little bit too much for me. Uh, as you can see, I'm already in my true natural color of the summer. I call it lobster red, and it took me one day in. Portugal on my holiday to get to that state. So 25 is the maximum for me. Thirty-four in Seoul. Uh, that must be quite humid. I was in Hong Kong uh, several years ago, and I remember 30 degrees was yeah, pretty humid. Yeah, you would get totally drenched as soon as you leave the hotel or any other place with a air conditioner. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to see that all of you are active and replying. It's 43 of us here right now. And I think we can actually start. All right, so hello everyone. Happy to see you on our demo webinar. And my name is Daniel Sipenix. I'm part of the customer solutions team here at Localize. And I'm based in, like I said, not so sunny Riga, Latvia, actually where Localize was born. So today I will take you on a quick tour of our product and answer all of your questions at the end of it as well. So if you have any, uh, please leave them in the questions tab, not in the chat, so we can moderate them. And let's start with a quick presentation. I'm going to share it with you right now. And here it is. All right. Can everyone see it well? Perfect. That's great. Okay. So what we'll focus on today is what Localize actually is. I'll explain our dashboard quickly. Uh, we'll create a demo project. A, then we'll connect the source to it connect design tools for context. Uh, we'll add a couple of languages, add contributors, probably translators for this matter, and create a task for them. And at the end of it, when all of it is done, we'll export translated files. Now, what Localize actually is. So at Localize, our vision is to remove all language barriers between businesses and their customers. Uh, we truly believe that uh, localization will soon be at the core of every business. And for that, you will need a translation management system for continuous localization. 
Uh, with it, you can streamline uh, your workflow. You can eliminate time waste for all of the stakeholders. Um, hundreds of spreadsheets will be replaced by one tool for collaborative translation, easy planning, top-level overview, and your terminology, context, and QA will all have their own place within Localize2. So essentially, it becomes the single source of truth for all of your localization. Now, you're able to work on all of your assets. So that will be web applications, mobile apps, games, documents, marketing. Um, you can even connect your support knowledge base, like Intercom or Zendesk, and Salesforce CRM to localize that as well. And like I said, uh, all of your team will work within one environment, which really saves not only time, but uh, hair uh, on your head, uh, especially when working with tons of spreadsheets. Um, and we always suggest a modern way uh, of localization where you can start um, at the design stage and have a cycle where Managers come up with a new feature, designers design it, essentially import it into localize, translators or copy uh, team will then log in and amend everything, translate everything, reviewers will check and approve, and then it will get to developers and they will be able to download it or export it in the right format for whichever application they're using. And this, this cycle can repeat over and over again without any issues. So let's actually go and I'll share my screen and show you an example. Uh, while I'm switching between the screens, um, what do you use right now? Maybe you can share uh, within the chat as well. Okay, smart cat, yeah. Figma for design, low size, heard of that one as well. Anybody on the good old spreadsheet here? Okay, sadly, yes. PowerPoint. Um, PowerPoint is something we're uh, still working on. At some point, we'll be able to to do that as well. And Google Docs, yeah. We all came from there. All right, so I'm sharing my screen and please let me know if you can see it well. And three, two, one, and the loop. Can everyone see it well? Let's quickly check. All right, perfect. All right, so this is Localize and this is our dashboard, essentially where all of your projects live. Now, what you see here is several projects that I've usually used uh, for demos. Um, we uh, suggest to divide your projects, uh, let's say mobile into one, uh, have your marketing in another one connected with all of the CMSs uh, like Storyblock and Contentful or WordPress, for example, to really divide and make it easier. But then at the same time, it's really your choice how you do it. Um, as you can see, there is a top level overview from here. Uh, we can actually expand a little bit more and you will be able to see under every project uh, what kind of languages you have there, what words, uh, how many words there are left to do, the progress, how many translations are unverified. And also we have 13 built-in QA checks. So that's available here as well. And if you want to check all unverified strings, for example, just by clicking that, it will filter them out. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to do is actually create a demo project. And we will go ahead and actually see how to set everything up.
So I already have some source. As you can see, my project is empty now. Um, if you're not uh, on the tech part, let's say, uh, you can actually invite your developers straight away so they can connect everything. If you have access to your repositories and everything else, you can do that yourself. So let's start from the integrations. As you can see, we can integrate with quite a few different things. Uh, we support a number of uh, repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket, Azure, uh, GitLab. Uh, we work with management tools like Jira, Asana, Trello to really create issues in the environments where you already used to. Uh, you can even connect to Slack uh, to create a notification channel. And as you can see, we can also connect to design tools like Figma, Sketch, and Adobe XD. And like I said before, support can also be connected so you can translate your intercom articles or Zendesk guides, or you can even use our plugin to live translate all of the incoming messages. But let's not get carried away and connect the source first. So I usually use GitHub and all I would need to do is actually provide my personal access token, choose the branch, and then select which platforms I will be importing the files for. And this will dictate which formats I can then use on the export. Now let's select and pull. Now I can synchronize a file. I have a single JSON file here and I will confirm. Now I can set up some pull options, for example, pre-translating everything with translation memory on the upload or maybe even a cleanup, you know, if you, constantly re-importing the same file, but developers change some things on their side. So that will be updated inside Localize as well. And, but at this point, I'll just do the pull. And as you can see, it's quite manual uh, at, at this point, but you can automate import and export via webhooks or via API. So all of this can be done. Today we'll do a semi-automatic semi way. Now, what you see here is my file that has been imported into Localize. The next thing that I would like to do is actually have a language added. So let's go ahead and add French, um, German. And since I speak Russian, I'll add Russian here as well. And voila, it creates the empty fields. Now, as an admin, I see those empty fields straight away, but the translator will only see the contributable pair uh, they actually taken care of. So since we're speaking about the translators, let's invite a couple, or I probably have one. Yeah, I have myself. Uh, so I can invite myself as a translator, and provide a language pair in which I will contribute, or I can invite myself as an administrator. So that would be for designers, PMs, um, developers, of course, uh, or even maybe for the LSP admin who will be working inside Localize. Now you can also use a reviewer option and give that particular user the possibility to kind of final stamp the translations and approve them. So let's go ahead and add me as an admin. As you can see, you can manage all of the access points as well. Very easy to create very specialized roles within Localize. And if we go back to the project, now what's missing really here is I would say glossary would be something that we would suggest to set up at first. So I would create Localize. And that is our company name. If it was to be translated, I can actually provide different translations in different languages and descriptions. Uh, but in our case, we don't want it to be translated and we want our translators to know about it. So we'll just make it non-translatable and case sensitive and save that as an entry. Now, if I go into the project, you will actually see where was localize? Uh, it's not here yet. All right, let's 
to the next step then. So it's quite raw. We don't have any context now. I mean, translation memory is already available to me because I've translated this project before and it's all saved inside Localize. But let's go into Figma. Now, this is my design and I have strings imported for the first two slides already. So what I would like to do is actually open our plugin and I will connect Figma to my demo project. And I hope I will connect it to the right one. So let's check. Again, you can choose the naming pattern so that text elements will be created as uh, keys inside Localize. And if you agree on the naming convention, you will actually be able to create the keys in the correct format for your developers to use in the future. So let's go ahead and actually select all of these as well and do the connection. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to push my design from Figma into Localize. Now, I want to match Figma texts to existing translations. I want to create missing keys and link all of the duplicates into one key so I don't have to translate it over and over. I will tag the new keys that weren't uh, in my GitHub as new feature. And I will update no, that I won't need and that I won't need either. I will update the screenshot. So basically create context there. So let's proceed. And if I've selected the right project, I have not. All right, let's uh, do this again. Let's disconnect the problem of naming your projects in the same way. All right, let's hope that this is the one. So let's do this again. Push, tag, new feature and proceed. Aha, uh -huh. so this is the one. So we've linked 25 keys now. Eight of them were created new, so from these two screens. And four screenshots were uploaded. Now, if we go back into the project, what I have now is context. And every one of the strings will actually be circled and connect it on the screenshot. So what you can even do is filter it out by screens and click on the particular one and that will filter out only the keys that are available on that screen. So right now, I would actually be ready to do a translation task. So let's get out of this and go into task. I would create a task for my translator now and give it a due date for next Friday, let's say. And as you can see, we can create a translation and review all task. And the second can be linked to the first and be triggered when translation has been finished. So again, a little bit of automation, saving you time. And let's go and create. So there, you can lock some of the translations. You can auto-close tasks, but these options can discuss in more details uh, on a one-to-one -one session, really. And let's go and assign languages to it. So I'll go for all of the languages straight away. And for French, I can actually choose my other translator and create it. Now, as an admin, I will have an overview of every task that I've created, and I will see the progress. I will also get notification when it's completed and I can download a analysis. It's basically a spreadsheet with uh, all of the translation memory that was available and all of the word counts and so on. It takes a little bit of time to prepare. So let's not focus on it right now. Now the translator will actually get a notification by default, it will be sent to email, uh, but they can actually go ahead and start doing the translations for the pairs that they've selected. Now, since we will not do the translations here on a demo right now, what I will do, I will actually apply translation memory to everything. Straight away, I was prepared. And as you can see, we have activity tracker as well. So it will not only show the 
current actions in progress, but it will track all of the actions of every single user. So if anything went uh, wrong by any means, you can always see what happened and what. But now that we've done the translation and everything is ready, technically we can export it now, but I would like to show you a quick thing. So what we can actually do is pull everything back into Figma. And as a designer, I can even create an automation that whenever I push something, it will automatically will be translated by machine translation, for example. And I will be able to pull everything into my design right away and see, for example, in French, I can see that it doesn't fit. So I need to work on this, maybe font, uh, maybe set some character limits, uh, which in fact I can do from localize, you know, by selecting an individual screen, I will be able to push a character limit back into the project and localize. So once I've checked French, I can go into German and proceed and check it in German and so on and on and on. So before you even started developing your feature, you can approve it in every language that you're going to localize to and eliminate all of the future mistakes and errors that arise from doing it later. Now we've done everything and it's time to export. Like I said, you can set up automated exports. You can choose a number of different formats uh, whilst the strings or keys are inside localized. Uh, we're format agnostic, uh, so you can choose the one you need. There is a line of different options here. What exactly you're going to export. You can combine different projects, select languages. At this point, all I want to do is just push it back into my repository and do the build. And that's it. Right now, I will create a auto pull request, uh, or sorry, pull request, and there will be a new branch created on my GitHub site. And all the developers need to do, merge them into the code. That's it. So this was a very quick uh, demo. There are many more features like context editors, like, um, even the chat that you can communicate with uh, your colleagues in, and many other things that we can discuss on the one-to-one -one session. So I'd be happy to answer your questions now. And let's get into it. Okay, is your whole file on Figma linked or just one page in the file? Uh, it depends. So you can either select the whole project, you can link a single key, or you can link, you can basically select which text elements you link. How do you do quality assurance in the platform? Good question. And I haven't shown you this, but let me quickly share uh, my screen again and I'll show you. So if we go back into the project and Let's say that I have localize here. And I will remove this and just save it like this. So now it will actually show me a QA issue. There is spelling and grammar error. Now we will also check the numbers from source to target. HTML tags, uh, links, emails, and on and on and on. So there's 13 of them. White Trail is one of them, of course, as well. I hope this answers your question. And disable. So can you assign tasks to a set of screenshots? Um, yeah, you filter by screen, and then you select a, well, select all of the strings there and use a bulk action to create a task and just create a task for that specific uh, specific uh, well, set of strings. Um, how does localize match uniquely string in Figma with those in JSON? So we're basically matching them text to text. And in fact, if you changed 
a key name. Um, sometimes it happens, developers join and they say, all right, the format's not so good. We want to change that inside localize and then export. So we still have a different ID which links those two. And even if developers change something, the link will still be there. What is the best way to handle feedback process with Figma and Localize? And how could, does it make sense that Slack is involved in that? Um, very good question. So I'm guessing that feedback will not actually go into Figma. So imagine that Localize will now be the place where everyone edits everything. And for a designer, all you have to do is just to come um, at, at the beginning of your workday, open Figma and just download all of the latest updates from Localize into your design. Now, after you've done it, you know that you're working with the latest version and what, whatever you see that doesn't fit. And like I said, you either need to change the character uh, limit there, or maybe you won't even want to change the text yourself. You do it in Figma and then just push it back into Localize. Now, if you've done any changes in the source, all of the translations that are under that key will automatically become unverified, which will indicate that you need to adapt them. And you can easily filter them uh, by unverified tag, send them for a different translation, for example. All right. Are you going to cover using ICU with Localize? Um, I haven't done it, but we actually have it. Uh, so you can import your uh, plurals. You can import uh, variables, and they'll be seen um, as individual blocks inside Localize. And they will be highlighted so the translators then translate them. And in fact, what you can do now is you'll be basically able to use variables and then show one of the variables in, uh, in Figma as well when pushing. Our translators will not work in localize. How can the process look like in case the translators work in MS Office, Word, or Excel? Um, if they don't, it's... I mean, Localize would still be a little bit better than MS Office, uh, but if they don't want to do that, or if they have their own CAD tool, uh, what you can do is actually export the task in any specific format. Excel would be one of them. Um, Word uh, or DocX would be available for document projects. And if they want to translate that in a DocX or Excel, by all means, they can then upload it back. They will need an admin uh, role to import it back into Localize. Can you automate exports to update the language files directly on the GitHub repository and open a new pull request for it? Um, yes. So essentially, what you can do is use our webhook generator for a specific event, for example, um, task has been completed, uh, strings got approved, and that will trigger a auto pull request and basically pull everything back into GitHub. You will still need to merge it. So there is the final, final check uh, on the developer side, but uh, yeah, essentially you can do that. And all right. Spot on, one minute left. And uh, let's quickly see. Oh, client feedback. Um, client works in Figma, not in Localize. Hmm. I mean, they can still do that. If, if a client has access, well, has an account uh, inside Localize, then they can push their changes. If not, they can comment within Figma and whoever is responsible on your side for taking care of Figma, um, you can already address all of those issues inside Localize. I hope that uh, answers the question. Okay. 
I don't see any more questions. Oh, sorry, six, three more. Uh, what are the options for developers to have access to the keys and localize when they are building the screens? Um, so they will have access to localized environment. They will see it exactly as I saw it now. And they will be able to export pretty much any set of keys that they need. Or they can use API and pretty much automate any kind of possible uh, process that you like. And we have a lot of these. And if, if that's something that's important to you, we have a solutions architect uh, that can actually come on the call and suggest the best way forward. Can you show how the Live.js in context editor works? Unfortunately, we're already one minute over time. Uh, I'm happy to do that for you um, if you schedule a call with us and we we'll definitely do that. Uh, it takes a little bit uh, time to actually do it. So yeah, happy to do it one on one. Can we create a bilingual and a multilingual TM separately? Another question. All right, bilingual and multilingual TM. Um, this is a good question. To be honest, I'm not sure 100% how it's structured, uh, but you could have it bilingual. So if you're changing the source within the project settings from English to, let's say, French, and then translate from French to Russian, um, what it will do, it will actually save it from French to Russian. That will be the translation memory pair. Um, if English is source and anything translated, it will create that language pair there. In fact, there is quite a lot of different management uh, settings for translation memory as well, like prioritizing from different projects and so on. Another question from file type, like HTML, XML, or XLIF. Are there any issues in maintaining file structure? Um, HTML and XLIF, not really. Uh, XML, if that's from Android, again, no problem. Uh, but XML on its own is not actually supported on localized. And the reason for that is that the structure, it differs so much um, that we haven't actually done it for like to unify it. Um, something as a question, I guess, to our product team to see what they will be doing uh, in terms of that in the future. But we haven't had any problems uh, with clients, that, at least that I know, uh, regarding XML so far. All right, a uh, couple last questions. How does Localize help to match Figma text to JSON text? For example, if the Figma integration pulls text into Localize before the dev build and allocation of keys. Now, so if, if like I said, if the naming convention is right and you've pulled from Figma into Localize and created the keys, when developer will pull their files, they will be matched um, by key name. Now, if that's not the case, then at any point you can go into individual key in Figma and actually create a connection key by key. Can you customize the keys generated when you select a Figma file? Hmm. Sorry, I don't understand. Like, can you customize the keys generated when you select a Figma file? Do you mean Figma file selected inside localize or that one? I'm not very sure how to answer. I will minimize it for now. But uh, we'll definitely get back to you with an answer about this. How do you deal with translations that are used uh, multiple times across different projects, frames, and groups? Very good question. Um, you can link them. You can reference one to another. Uh, we have a duplicate finder that will basically allow you to merge uh, cross-platform keys with the same values or same platforms can be actually referenced. So when you translated one, the other one will get translated as well. And it looks like all of the questions are done. And uh, let's make the keys. We want to get keys before that. 
Um, that's no problem. If your devs make the keys first, they can upload them into localize uh, from their site. Um, that's not an issue. And if the key naming isn't set correctly, that's not an issue either because you will still have the text. So if developers have the text, uh, that will be weeks after the Figma is done. In that case, I would actually import from Figma and let your developers log in and rename every single one of the keys. So they will be doing the same process, but at least they will know where exactly those keys are from. You will still have your base values from Figma, but developers will be able to uh, change the naming uh, of the keys inside Localize. And whenever, whenever they have time, until they have logged in, you can actually do the localizations as always. All right, it looks like we are over the time and I'm super happy that there were so many questions. Um, this was the first session. There will be one in a month's time. And yeah, hope to see you on a one-to-one -one session soon. Hope you liked it. If you have any questions, definitely think them in our inbox. I think you will have it sent to you in an email as well. And yeah, it was a pleasure doing the demo for you today. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Have a great day. And yeah, I hope that your day is a little bit better than here. All right, switching off. Bye-bye.